Hi, Nick Houston here for Gotham Sound and Communications. Um, thanks for joining us on a very hot day and a very hot week in New York City. Um, today, we're going to talk about the new A20 receiver. Uh, just walked in the other day, just announced on Wednesday. Uh, we'll do an open box. We'll talk about the specifications, uh, why it's exciting, and some of the other things that are surrounding it in the ecosystem. And uh, as always, if you have any questions, leave them in the chat, and we will get to them. Um, so first and foremost, before we open the box, uh, I just want to talk about a couple of the exciting features, and we're just, we'll read them straight off of the Sound Devices website. So the big thing here uh, is that the A20 receiver has two-channel true diversity, so meaning there's actually four receivers in here, two channels, uh, two receivers feeding each audio channel, uh, and then the, you know, the actual master board. Uh, picking between the two, and it features a new uh, spectra band technology, uh, which depending on where you are in the world and what you're licensed for, uh, can have a tuning range of 470 uh, megahertz all the way up to 1,525 megahertz on a, on a single uh, unit. So, um, as I said, you know, and that's not the whole thing, right? There are different uh, pieces and parts in there. There's the guard band, there's the duplex gap, there's up 941, and then there's some stuff all the way up in 1525 uh, uh, that you would need to be licensed for. Uh, you can find out more about that. Uh, but those are for, for people like, you know, the Super Bowl, uh, where they're just using every possible channel of wireless that they need to, um, you know, need to get in and, and share frequencies with garage door openers. Um, so anyway, um, the they also uh, tout their new brick wasp brick wall saw filters, um, which uh, is, is supposed to provide very good um, RF rejection. Uh, so we'll have more testing on that uh, at another point in time. Um, and it's compatible with all of the previous A10, A20 transmitters um, and all that stuff. Uh, it comes in two versions. So it's got the, uh, the super slot version, which is what we're going to open today. And then there's also a um, an XLR backplate. Uh, there may be more backplate options coming at some point. Um, they have their long-range digital modulation, uh, and then they have their gain gain forward architecture, um, so that you can actually set the mini transmitters, the A20 minis transmitters, gain uh, via trim control, uh, either at the A20 or on a Sound Devices 8 series. Um, it's got full bandwidth um, audio. Uh, so 10 hertz all the way up to 20 kilohertz. Um, and as we talked about those saw filters, they're going to uh, filter out IFB and camera hop transmitters uh, without needing extra filtering. Um, and let's see. And there, as we said, there's going to be another backplate, the TA3 backplate, and you can do both analog line level or AES digital output, uh, depending on what your poison is. So anyway, we will... So those are the highlights, the hit list. Uh, we're going to bounce over now to the box. Um, so as you can see, the box is very shiny and reflective, um, which that's exciting. Um, so this is the A20 receiver, uh, super slot version, uh, made in the USA. Um, so we'll open it. It says it includes the um, the A20 receiver, the ASL, that's for the super slot backplate and SM antennas. So let's slide off the sleeve and open it up. And this is our demo unit, by the way. So that means we will be demoing this. Sorry for all the thudding. My goodness, I'm such a clumsy person. Uh, we will be demoing this. Uh, so if you would like to check out a demo of this and the A10 and A20 transmitter, let us know. All right, so we've got QR codes for documentation and firmware and registration. And then we've got our SMA antennas here. Let's see, so we've got straight. Oh, it looks like these are spare, so we could cut them to whatever length we want. It's fun, because look, they don't have caps on them. Uh, and then we've got two right angles and another straight. So the idea, for anybody that doesn't know, the idea is that if you have one right angle and one straight, the RF uh, will propagate differently into one that's angled this way and one that's angled this way. Uh, I don't know if I'm doing this right. Ah, there we go. Uh, and so the, di the diversity of the, ante the antenna diversity will give you a different RF look from each of those and be able to choose. All right, cool. 
Anyway, opening this up, we've got the receiver, we've got this flange, presumably for use for the SL2 or the older SL6 or anything that might need it to be slotted in, like a camera. And let's just dig, it's packed in foam, which I think is kind of cool. It reminds me of the inside of a pelican, but it's definitely molded, or it's definitely been specifically cut. Ah, and it comes with some hardware for the super slot, and it comes with some antenna caps. I'll open that up just so we can see. But I'm going to throw away, not throw away, but I'm going to put this off to the side. Okay, so let's just look at the hardware. I'm assuming this is a bunch of screws that I'm going to lose, and our rental apartment is going to be very mad at me when they try to send this out for a demo. But yes, there we go. We've got some short screws, we've got some long screws, but it does come with all the screws you would need. Looks like two of each, and or three of each, so two for use and two for a backup. And the antenna caps, you just wonder what that might be. Well, that's probably not antenna caps. It's probably Cracker Jack. Oh no, look at that. You can put all sorts of colors on it. That's fun, I like that. I like that they give you so many options for decoration. Okay, so that's what's in the box. And um, just to give us a, a little bit of a comparison, uh, and for other reasons that you'll find out later. I wanted to bring out the A10 so you could see just kind of what they look like side by side. Um, interface looks very similar. I'm gonna take the flange off just to make it even, but interface or the, yeah, the profile looks very similar if not exactly the same. Uh, so people who are familiar with Audio Limited, all the buttons are in the same place. All the uh, antennas are in the same place. We'll check out the screen once we get things on. And then it even looks like the exact same size. So you can see how the seam on the, um, on the back of the A10 lines up with that of the A20. Uh, clearly, this A20 is brand new because there are no scratches on it. Um, all right, so what we're going to do, I want to, um, before we do that, all right, and I just want to show some compatible products. Here's the A10 transmitter uh, with the new Super Mini uh, a20 transmitter so just so you can see the the different transmitters that work with this system so for fun um, we are going to power it on just to see what it looks like um, and if i don't uh, mess it up too much maybe we'll actually put audio through it so i brought the largest screwdriver in the world and uh, we will just show you how easy it is to take the back plates off and put new ones on so while i'm doing this there's four screws on the back doesn't uh, sticks in there. All right, so here's the super slot back plate. There it is. Okay, yeah, so you can see it. Multi-pin connector on the back. The screws do come out. So obviously it is, it is simple, not necessarily fast to switch the back plates, and I'm sure that anybody that did this on a regular basis would be able to switch them in and out um, quickly, but one of the things about uh, super slot technology, for anybody not familiar with it, is that if you have multiple things that have super slot on it, um, you can just pop things in and out. So let's say you, know, you had an SL2 uh, in your bag and you had an A10 rack on your cart. Uh, you could switch it out. You could just take the whole receiver out and pop it in and out, and there's no cables. It's just a couple of um, screws to, to lock it in. Uh, other things that are super slot compatible, um, you know, the PSC six-pack um, doesn't have super slot control, but it'll work. The Electro Octopack, I believe, is the same, and the Quad. Uh, there's a whole bunch of multi-couplers that'll do antenna distribution and such. Okay, so say goodbye to the A10. See you later. Thank you for donating your parts to the A20 cause. And now I'll try and put this on without uh, losing anything, including my mind.
All right, cool. So we got the backplate on. Um, so let me, let's power it on. So just to show the XLR backplate, it's the same backplate as, as that. It's got these uh, fun connectors that look like SMAs. So the, the cable's hardwired in there. Um, and you've got your left and right outputs. Uh, output one would be two channels of AES if you wanted. Output two is your second channel of analog. Uh, and then you've got one power cable that has kind of a neat uh, loop out so that you could actually just daisy chain power through multiple receivers or if you didn't want to invest in a battery distribution system, you could power this and let's say you're using a Mixpre or a Nova or, or a Zoom F8 or anything with a Hiroshi connector on it, quite literally you would just plug a battery connector into here and then you could plug uh, this side into your uh, recorder or mixer or you know whatever it is. Um, even if you have a Shure or a Sennheiser, oh, wait, what, who am I? Uh, sound device is 302 for using that. Uh, it's pretty easy. But anyway, so we're going to hook up this Audio Root um, eSmart BGDH Mark II. We're going to use our Inspired Energy batteries. We'll plug a sale that we're having on Inspired Energy batteries right now, 20% off for 20 years of Gotham. Um, I have been here for about 10 of those. That's terrifying. I did I did four years. Uh, I did the, f yeah, what is it? Years f uh, two through five. And then I went out in the field and then uh, I came back. And now I've been here for six. So um, it's been a great 10 years of my life. All right, so just to turn it on, so there's the screen. We've got receiver one, receiver two. I will put antennas on for funsies. And there we go. So I'll put one right angle antenna on there. I'll just go through the screens, and I don't think I'll go through setup and programming because I think that should be probably a, a shorter video that people can just access and have it be very simple rather than me fumbling through. Uh, all right, great. Well, anyway, here's the screen. So you've got receiver one, receiver two. We've got some flashing um, RF, which means there's nothing there. We're down at 470.2 uh, for both of them. And you can see there's also the Q meter. Uh, so the Q meter is a quality meter that tells you about the quality of the signal. So you might have full RF on your RF meter, um, but you know, depending if some, there is some kind of interference, you'll be able to tell what the actual quality of the signal is. So um, you know, as it gets further away, obviously the quality is going to drop, but also if there is some kind of interference, you'll be able to know like, hey, like even though I'm getting a signal, it's not right. So that's another cool feature. Uh, and just go through the menus. There's the menu button in the middle. Um, we've got a left and a right, so this becomes select. So we can exit. Hey, there we go. Uh, and we can look at, oh, what does that do? That's fun. So we push left, uh, and we can go into the transmitter pairing. That is cool. OK. Uh, anyway, so that's just another way to look at the individual channels by pushing left, uh, channel 1, channel 2, et cetera. Okay. We push that and go into the menu. We can select our, our frequency settings are here, so we can manually program that uh, based on, we can either tune it or do it based on the TV channel or band. Um, we can do look at the outputs, so adjust the max level. The audio polarity, I guess you can flip the phase. Always a fun thing to do. Uh, output mode, analog or AES. I'm going to switch it over to analog. And, oh, we can put a test tone. I do love when receivers have test tone. It makes it so much easier when I forget a tone stick, which is all the time. Uh, we can do our scanning. Um, so we can select, looks like we can set the, uh, the range. Uh, so let's see, auto 470 to 494. Okay, well, that's what we'll do. And it's just scanning pretty fast. Look at those numbers go. All right, great. We'll just auto assign 470.2, 475.2. Guess 470 is pretty good in New York. All right, so there's our scan. Privacy, I'm not going to touch that. I feel like I'm going to lock it and never know how to unlock it. 
look at some settings. So we've got the modulation, standard and long range. Okay. Um, we've got user groups. We can tell it what country we're in. Nice. Can I just ask? Maybe I'll be in a different country. Maybe I'll be in Thailand. Uh, all right. Change the display, brightness, screensaver, orientation, because you can flip it. Sometimes it's nicer to have it upside down depending on how you're looking at it. And the Q meter and uh, LEDs. Oh, so you can turn the LEDs off and go into stealth mode. That's fun. Cool. So that's the menu. Um, as I said, we will do a more uh, in-depth uh, video on, not even in-depth, we'll do a very fast video on how to program and tune these things. Um, the A20 receivers are shipping now. Uh, they're in stock and available um, in limited quantities, but more will be available. I think they're $29.95. If you're already in the A10 ecosystem, there are some upgrade paths. Um, you're going to go, if you've bought them, I think in the last year, um, you can contact Sound Devices directly and they'll tell you about it. If you buy an A20 Mini um, now, I believe there's another upgrade path that will uh, that that'll enable you to do. So they're encouraging you to, to get into the ecosystem or upgrade your ecosystem by getting uh, the new transmitter uh, with the new receiver. And that's it's really interesting that that's going through Sound Devices. I think it's cool that they're um, that doing that. Anyway, um, let's see. We got a couple of people saying that they're pumped and hello, so hello, uh, and I'm glad you're pumped. I'm also pumped. Um, it's always cool to have new wireless technology and I cannot wait to put it through the paces. So that being said, anybody interested in putting it through the paces and doing a real great test, it's always better when it's done in the field, that's when it's done in the shop. So give us a call, let us know you want to, uh, you want to demo this and we'll get this out to you for a week and, and let us know what you think, we really value your input. All right. If you guys have any questions, this is the last call, last call for questions. Uh, and if there are no questions, I will do my standard wrap up. Um, but again, sound devices, A20 receiver, new generation of the audio limited A10. So A10 to A20 and audio limited, obviously, to sound devices working with the A10 transmitter and the A20 super mini transmitter uh, to provide digital RF modulation. Um, to your bag cart or whatever you're using. So, oh, and yeah, well, the one, and to just to review the features, uh, full wideband tuning uh, all the way from 470 to 1525 with the appropriate licensing uh, and also depending on your country. Uh, so it can actually change uh, depending on where you are in the world. So it's kind of the, A the A20 will pair with that and can be upgraded to the same thing. Uh, so if you are someone who travels, you can be legal worldwide, um, which that's pretty cool. Um, and the saw filters, uh, the brick wall saw filters, um, really giving you uh, good RF rejection, particularly for IFBs and camera hop in the bag. I can't tell you how um, how many people and how many times um, you know people have had problems with having transmitters sitting several inches away from receivers and wondering why they're not getting range myself included. Um, it's, that's a, a big deal. All right. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. Uh, really appreciate it. Um, do they make a mini transmitter for camera, a mini receiver for, for camera use? Um, they, these, the, the receivers you've seen today are the only ones available uh, for the audio limited line at this time. Um, so I, I don't, you know, I'm not a spokesperson for sound devices. Um, yeah, I'm not a spokesperson for sound devices slash audio limited. Uh, I have no idea what they're up to for development is if we, they come out with anything. If you have suggestions, they're, they're a great bunch of people that always work hard to make uh, good products. So I'm sure they'd be open to it. Um, another question from, uh, Martin, um, Am I correct that after auto-tune, we will still need to manually dial in the transmit frequency? Um, no uh, is, is, well, maybe is the answer. So uh, if you have an A10 transmitter, my understanding is that, yes, you will need to um, dial in the, uh, the, the frequency, but this A20 uh, can pair with the receiver and be controlled directly. 
Um, and I hope that's, that's the right answer. Uh, that is what I read on the page earlier, and I'm going to stick by it until I'm wrong. And um, anyway, I think that's it for questions, unless something comes in in the next 10 seconds. But uh, again, thank you for watching. Uh, as always, uh, if you have any questions, um, you can email us at info at gothamsound.com. Follow us on Facebook and Twitter. Um, and as always, if you want to watch this video or others, um, go to gothamsound.tv.